What's up, everyone, and welcome back to the LCS, where we just watched 100 Something. Thieves a game. literally steal a play. game uh, from Golden Guardians, or at least that's how it felt with the position that Golden Guardians had earned themselves uh, through their early game advantages. We're going to start in the draft, though, talk about some of the picks that came out in this one. Who wants to take the lead? Jat was pretty passionate about yeah, bot lane. Yeah. I thought it was very interesting that Golden Guardians picked Kaisa Nautilus that early mm. uh, because they wanted to dive the jinx. It's something that happened like maybe a lot more in 2021, but not something we've seen basically at all this year. I know Lost was borderline a Kaisa one trick in 2021, as in like if he had it, they had a really good chance of winning. Like it was a good thing when he was on Kaisa, and they played the early laning phase incredibly well. Like we have like two segments in this post game. Uh -huh. yeah. We yeah. have the Golden Guardians have done it. They have perfected <laughs> They've the early won the game. game. They did an amazing job with early laning, and they transitioned to a bunch of early objectives, and they got a 12,000 gold lead, which cascaded to a Nexus kill. But, it, like, it didn't. So now <laughs> we have two segments yeah, exactly. of how that didn't happen. Yeah. Well. And the other thing I want to bring up is the top lane matchup, because mm. we were talking about Trindamir and the 100 Thieves themselves were talking about Trindamir as a focal point around uh, there's any sort of split-pushing pressure that they've had. We know Someday's going to perform on that pick. It's banned 4-5. Uh, we get the NAR uh, pick from um, GG, and you're like, okay, maybe he'll go for a lane counter. Uh, because, you know, we're looking at someday. One of the things is we're like, well, he typically used to be a weak side player playing tanks. More recently, mm -hmm. he's taken more of a, a carry role. Is he going to pick? No, he picks Scion, which <laughs> yeah. ends up being actually really important when we look at the early game. Uh, yeah, I think that combined with the rise, this is something that globally, Kaisa's priority has been going up, Rise's priority has reached first pick status, and that combined with Nocturne made them very scared to actually uh, pick a, a carry in the top lane. Yeah, and this was an early point that I thought was big. Like, when we saw the draft, we thought, okay, they're going to stack a wave, and they're going to try and dive this at level 3 or level 4. But look at the health on the Nautilus and the Kaisa. It's 100%, so Closer just has to back away. I've seen so many 100 Thieves games where they've gotten a good trade and those guys are at 40% or 70%, and they do that dive because they knew Nocturne and Path top lane based on early wards they'd gotten. So, like, that's a type of, like, sync that has just been off for 100 Thieves. That whole draft is about dominating bottom lane, getting them maybe an early kill, and then stacking dragons and winning through 5v5 teamfighting. They still did win through 5v5 team fighting, but they took the very mm -hmm. long route. And you saw those stats up there in terms of, okay, we're looking at, you know, Lost and Olive. They're not actually leaning all that bad in that yeah. matchup. Licorice was actually dominating, <laughs> dominating the top lane matchup into the NAR. And one thing that's been kind of underrated about Golden Guardians early game in general, like they've made some smart moves, but their laners have also been leaning really, really well. And that takes a lot of pressure off of Pride Stalker, who is on a jungler who wants to farm up into carry rel relevancy. I think the problem with all of the stuff that happened in the draft for 400 Thieves side is that they sacked top lane so hard that it put extra pressure on the point that Jat was making about you have to snowball through bot lane. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I think Someday and 100 Thieves were scared to take a carry skill matchup into the blind NAR. That's normally what people do. They'll take things like the Camille, they'll take things like the Jace, but with the global mobility from the Rise and the Nocturne, they basically sacked their entire you know red side, fifth pick, counter pick, top lane that you want to slam lane with, mm -hmm. and just took a scaling top that fell 50 CS behind without any jungle intervention. Yeah. Then Nocturne got hella fed uh, mm -hmm. from farming, and then the bot lane didn't go well. And so that put a position where Golden Guardian should have won the game. Yeah, like their draft should have slammed this. They're in a position where they have like absolute side lane dominion, right? They have neutral objective control. And then when they're going into these fights, they start they start losing the 5v5. I have one other point in defense of 100 Thieves. Okay. When I see that, like the way they drafted this, like it's 100 Thieves. early victor, <laughs> Five picking the Scion and Dinar. I bet you they had like seven scrims this week where they won with Scion. And the reason they're doing it on stage is like, all right, no matter what happens in the early game, we're <laughs> going to be so good in team fights. And like this possibly can just prove that to be right. Because sure, this no one wants to fall 10,000 gold behind, but they're, they have such a better 5v5. Uh, I'm not sure if this I, game is proof of anything. Uh, I will go so far as to say this. With how League of Legends is balanced, there is no draft that should fall 10,000. Yeah, never, never, never. In, in a competitive game, no team should fall 10k down and be expected to then win. Correct, but I feel like they were pretty comfortable with this comp. Fair. 
<laughs> they, uh, they, they were, <laughs> a, a dragon got smiped over with a Lee Sin Q over the wall. Oh, yeah. yeah. Don't tell me that's how this that, comp it, plays. It's, it's not. It's not. But this is why they would do it. Yeah. yeah because yeah, something yeah, yeah. like this is possible when you fall behind. Yeah. It's, it's an insanely good team fight comp. And so when Golden Guardian starts making mistakes from 10,000 mm -hmm. gold up, this is a draft that can punish that and then actually win fights from behind. Just yeah. not usually 10k behind. If you're 5k behind, way more reasonable. But when you look, look at that gold graph. Oh, God. Yeah. They That's didn't even get, they was. never yeah. had a lead this entire game. No. There's zero red on your screen. Yeah. That's messed up. We're looking Ooh. at the face of a cliff there right at the end, but. Uh, That's the Dawn Wall. But, well, everyone yeah. died. Everyone That's died before. That's the National <laughs> Park. That is the like straight climb that Alex, whatever his name is, you know. Yeah. You're, talking about, you're talking about Alex Honnold, but the Dawn Wall was actually Tommy Caldwell. Oh, my the bad. more famous Dawn Wall climber. Uh, flexing a little knowledge it's there. It's super interesting. But, it's like, I don't know who's the better team after this one. Yeah. Because if if Golden Guard right there, you get seven even, and five, five seven, but you're all you're sitting there going line. like, ah, yeah. this should have been six six for both teams, yeah. and that's kind of yeah. what it is. They feel even. It's like about how they respond to what happened, right? Does Golden Guardians just tilt out the face of the earth? Because technically, their raw ingredients continue to be good, right? I mean, are you? I mean, you would think so. But Hunter Thieves is winning the game. Uh, FBI player of the game. You see it there on your screens. There uh, took him a while to warm up in terms of like the kill category, uh, yeah. but uh, playing safe on that jinx was integral to the team's victory. Now with that win today, hundred thieves are that much closer to punching their playoff ticket. And speaking of playoff tickets, guess what? We are thrilled to be reuniting with fans Let's in the LCS go! studio come spring playoffs. Tickets will go on sale. March 17th. So mark your calendars and grab one so we can see all of your lovely faces here in the studio. Not only that, but the LCS is headed to the Lone Star State for spring finals. For the first time in more than two years, we'll crown a champion live and in person with the fans. And I cannot wait. I have missed the roar of a crowd, the vibration Please. of a Let's stadium go. as fans attend live. I know Flowers as well. We were talking the off base camera of about Baron, it. So like, you can't sneak it. And <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hear it it's and it a completely so different game when you're <laughs> playing in the round in a big stadium. And so we'll see which of our teams are lucky enough to make that trip out there and join us along with those of you who managed to get tickets. But now as we turn our eyes and our attention to our next match, FlyQuest, Kumo, and CLG's Jenkins gave us their thoughts on their upcoming face-off. Take a look. I think CLG Jenkins is a pretty stable play, um, and also he has a lot of niche champs that he's really good at, like Kennen, and I mean there's a lot of random stuff he plays as well off to the side. Maybe some people don't know, but he plays like Shivana and Nico. Um, yeah, I just think he's a pretty good, like solid player. Like he won't really lose you the game. Uh, my matchup against Kumo is hard to tell for me personally, just because um, when I last played against him, he was playing Gianna top, so I actually didn't really get to lean against him. So it's very hard for me to judge him as a player with upfront experience. Uh, you should have called him a coward. He I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he did. He ran away with Jenna. I don't know. To me, that's like um, one of the most hilarious uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> moments of seeing how the two players view each other. One of them's yeah. like. He plays weird stuff, Nico, yeah. Shiv. Well, like, I, we saw the Shiv from Whippo, but like things that don't really get played at the moment. The other guy's like, I haven't actually laned against him yet this year, so I don't know what to think about him fun, either. The funniest thing about that is there was a pause where I thought he was like gonna slam him, where he's like, he plays Kennen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it, that's it. Um, quick note for those of you at home, FlyQuest will themselves be playing from home today while CLG is playing from the studio. So just so that nobody thinks anything's wrong when those chairs are empty on that one side of the stage. But Kumo Jenkins, I do think, is an important discussion uh, yeah. to have, if only because we didn't actually get to see them match up last time around. So there are some questions about how that 1v1 ultimately plays. And to me, their story is actually very similar. They're both kind of journeyman top laners who have dipped in and out of LCS and spent a long time in Academy. Like, this is actually the NA developing talent that people should be following and cheering for if they believe in that structure and system. So that's what I like seeing of these two guys. And FlyQuest in particular has found a lot of success with Kumo and overall as a team this year. Okay, so where is that success coming from? Because this has kind of been the conundrum <laughs> of the spring split is we can all look at FlyQuest and go, wow, well, hey, well done, sitting in third place. We've had some detractors from that. We've had some people saying, oh, the record's lying about it. And yet they still manage to remain in that top three to five conversation. 
So, Emily, what's your best take as to why it is they're picking up these wins? So, I'll look at Jungle specifically. Uh, I think Jose Deodo has played a lot better than last year, let's just say. And we've had this Jungle plus laner conversation. Uh, I'm glad Mark is here for this, considering he is a jungle hater. Whoa! Uh, but Whoa. We're, we've, we've had the discussion of like, if your lanes are improved, you have so much more room as a jungler, right? And I do think that is what happens when you add uh, Tukoi to this lineup, who's been performing like very steadily in the mid lane. I think that's super important. Um, I also think Afro uh, Johnson has looked like so much better in a lot of these, having Afro at his side. So that is another part of it. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking at Jose specifically and how much he's improved since last year. I think uh, obviously Jose himself stepping up individually. I know I'm, I'm the jungle hater uh, who's <laughs> like, oh, if your laners are good, you look good as a jungler. But I don't think like they got massively better at laners just playing around Jose. So I mm -hmm. think he deserves a lot of credit for stepping up. And I think the other thing does go to Afro is their team fighting. Uh, there's been a lot of games where FlyQuest has fallen behind and come back in those games. And you can always talk about people throwing. You know, we were kind of just talking about that in the last segment with Golden Guardians versus 100 Thieves. But mm -hmm. someone there has to be there to catch it. And I think FlyQuest are such a solid team that they will punish mistakes that people make. I got a question for you. You're a jungle hater. How do you feel about the big environment? Big environment's looking real good. Okay, that's what I like. I'm to also hear. an environment hater. You know, I, that's you what I was. My Hummer I was, was, I was waiting. To, I was waiting to see if you're about to make a lot of enemies out there. Yeah. Quick, uh, another quick note for everybody at home. With FlyQuest playing from home, there is a little bit more of a delay because we have to build in a competitive integrity uh, period. Uh, uh, for the game. No to be stream played snipers out. at home. Yeah. Exactly. So just so everyone's aware, that's why we have a few extra minutes here to talk about the matchup at hand. You know the crazy, like the worst part about coaching remote? What? You can't watch the game live. Oh. Oh. Because you don't have so like a shadow play you. of. No, no, no. Oh, okay. They'll send you like a coach stream, which is like 30 seconds ahead of live, but literally what happens in like the player room. You like you it's hear three a player or four shout, minutes, yeah. And then like six <laughs> minutes later, you see what happens. And oh like, lord, the, unlucky. Like, yeah, it's, it's gotta be it's so stressful. It's awful. Did you, just you get walk good? Outside. Did you get very good though at identifying the good shouts and the bad oh, yeah. shouts? It's whenever Core is yelling. <laughs> yeah, okay. Like TL was winning. That was okay. what's happening. But uh, to diagnose like FlyQuest success, I imagine if they're winning, it's like Aphromoo talking a lot and mm -hmm. being very vocal. Uh, they have been able to win close games, and that is a skill in itself. It does. It's not as repeatable as blowing people out, but like. That, to me, is why they're winning. It's coordination and team fighting and clear plans on how to close games. We just watched Golden Guardians with an 11,000 gold lead lose. I don't think that happens if FlyQuest has an 11,000 gold lead. I think they close it out decisively. And to that point, when they are in 100 Thieves shoes, Afro is also good about finding plays from behind, knowing yep. Yep. how to stay in it, keep people calm, and be like, okay, well, we can sack this third dragon, but we need to do this for fourth, and start setting you up for the longer-term plays that you'll need to make to come back. And I think that's the big difference when we're looking at these two teams uh, going up against each other is that Aphromoo is such a great veteran voice to have on a team. Like, I cannot stretch, stre bleh, stress enough how much he brings to uh, team comms. And so then with, uh, <laughs> there he is, like, chilling at the point. <laughs> Um, with CLG though, we talk about we talk about like contracts trying to step up into a leadership role. We talk about a lot of these players not having the same amount of stage experience or having been in the LCS for like a, in a emergency substitution situation or a little bit and then called back down to academy and bouncing back and forth. Yeah. And if there's a difference in terms of when CLG get leads and try to close them out, they seem to have a pretty good understanding of what they want to do, but the execution is sometimes not there. Yeah, and I will actually say you can look at the records seven and four versus three and eight. I don't think like if I go lane by lane that FlyQuest gaps CLG by yeah. that yeah. margin. Right. But it's completely the cohesion of a team. CLG has some some of probably second worst cohesion in the league. I think TSM has been number one so far this split. Yeah. So like I don't necessarily think it's player talent that's holding CLG back. It's just their ability to work together. There's just too many random deaths. And FlyQuest has almost no random deaths. Yeah. So that's the difference. Well, and I think that's why a lot of times we want to look at contracts as that experienced player on CLG to <laughs> find a way to bring everyone together and get them on the same page. So let's see if they can do it today here against the FlyQuest that has continued to impress us throughout the spring split. Back over to Flowers and Kobe for the call. Thank you very much, Dash, and welcome back, everybody. After that incredible comeback from 100 Thieves, it's time for us to jump into some Fly <laughs> Quest and some CLG. Now, that yeah, last game, here. that last game got pretty exciting towards the end, mm. but we didn't have a lot of early game action. I'm hoping this mm. time it's going to be a little spicier a little earlier. Well, luckily for you, I feel like every CLG game has had some exciting factor early on. Mm -hmm. It has not always been to CLG's benefit, 
but they get shit happening. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, I am on board. Sign me up. I'd say get me a ticket, but I'd rather have two just in case I lose the first one. I want some action in the early game. Let's see what kind of action we get here in the draft. The Rise banned out by FlyQuest along with Yumi. Hecarim banned out by CLG. Hecarim uh, seeming to become a pretty popular red side band these days with how powerful he is in the jungle. Yes, sir. Um, and banning out a couple of the companions here as well. Interesting thing is to me is the Yumi ban. Um, so I'm already eyeballing supports here for FlyQuest for Aphromoo. Aphromoo is always a support player that loves playing kind of on the bleeding edge of supports um, and, and pushing the meta. He has played all types of support champions. So maybe we'll, we will see something interesting out of the side of FlyQuest. Diana ban rounding it out. Interesting kind of uh, snipe here at Contracts, at CLG, bending away an AP jungler, one of the few AP junglers that exist. Yeah. Um, so maybe they're actually expecting some attack damage mid lane for Power Fox or something. Because of all these target bans though, Flowers, Zeri we get Zeri through. Zeri picked up for Johnson. And we're talking about after moving supports, but man, that opens up a lot of possibilities for bottom lane. Well, remember though, this is after Zeri received quite a few nerfs, mm -hmm. right? Like the champion. I remember the last time when you and I were looking at what nerf did I she actually get. I still think she needs another round, we, personally. We but... looked at the nerfs and it was just a whole page of stuff. We're like, oh wow, okay, they nerfed everything. So it is a nerfed Zeri, but still a very powerful champion. Yeah. The Hecarim and Lee Sin targeting Jose Diodo, trying to shut down a bit of the Tuki time over there on FlyQuest. Jinx banned away, so not quite as much of that potential for a hyper carry late game comeback performances or anything like that. But it will be Nautilus and Kai'Sa. We're going to get to see this combination again, this time piloted by CLG. Yeah, the uh, combo definitely gaining some priority. Kai'Sa really back into the meta now. Everybody wants to utilize the Muramana builds with the with the AP splashes. Let's see about FlyQuest though. The response here, I actually expect Aphromoo support and then, um, oh, and jungle uh, pickup would be my second guess. Pick something up for Jose here so you don't get banned out again since there's already three jungle bans. Please lock it in. Lock yes, it. yes, we're, Aphromoo we is also go. one of the perfect players in the LCS to play uh, Renata for us. I'm so excited. Um, Renata's steroid. Uh, and being able to get uh, takedowns to get your own revive there actually really helps out with Zeri, that is a damage and mobility based champion. So I think that's a pretty good pairing. And here could be that jungle pick we're talking about. Early game jungle, the Volibear is in as well. You can set up dives for bottom side. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of range advantage down here. When you have Zeri plus Renata, uh, double range poke, trying to set up brush control on bottom side of the map, trying to get Zeri a position around the minions to be able to harass with too. Um, definitely a lot of possibilities here with this volley bear for Jose, who has been really instrumental in FlyQuest success stories. Okay, so we got junglers, we got bot laners for both sides. That means it's time for some solo lane bans in the second half of the draft. Where do they want to target here? Remember, it will be up to CLG to decide who they want to give that final counter pick of the game over to. How are they going to focus this one? Well, we banned out the Rise, but Twisted Fate is still available, one of the premier mid laners because of the side lane control. And they are looking at a bottom lane that looks very offensive here. If you have double range bottom lane like that, like Renata is a good champion to pick it, pick it into. So I would think FlyQuest would ban it out um, since CLG get the first pick in the second half. But Ari picked up here. Ari Vagar uh, have been two other mid laners that I've been circling around. Could drop a, uh, drop some extra priority here with the Ari taken off the pick though. Palfox not wanting to play into that one. That makes me think that Palfox does want to play one of these control mages. So still a lot of possibilities here. Meanwhile, the Jenkins Kuma. We had interviews with both of them, yeah. setting up the possible rivalry, and there's just nothing there. <laughs> they were both like, uh, yeah, he's pretty good. And then Jenkins was like, oh, yeah, I didn't even lane against him the first time around. It was Janet. He was running support. So, you know, not a, not a lot of emphasis there. But whenever you're playing against Jenkins, you know, you could throw a cannon ban um, because that is his premier champion. Plus, whenever you have Kai'Sa on a team, you've always got to be respectful of what other dive options could be added to that composition exactly. to be dangerous with Kai'Sa's dive. And things that can apply CC to give the plasma. So, you know, any yep. top laners that also have CC and dive would be good choices. 
Gwen definitely has dive, does not have CC, but they ban out the Gwen anyways. And that Twisted Fate does okay. get all the way through the second round of bans here. That thing is dive for Kaisa. You port in, you gold card, that stuns the person and applies the plasma, perfect dive target combination there. Uh, and CLG have tried to use the Twisted Fate before. See if they can actually get it across the finish line this time around. All right, what's the answer here in the mid lane? What will deal with the Twisted Fate? Syndra is the choice here for Takoi here in mid lane to deal with that one. Plenty of burst power on that, plenty of wave clear, just one of the most traditional, like, evergreen picks in mid lane. Yep, and she's quite good uh, in the matchup because you have kill pressure. You want to play off of kill pressure when you've got a volley bear jungle. You want to threaten these Volley Bear ganks. So uh, Volley Bear can come in, he can force flashes off Twisted Fate. And if Syndra can threaten with the long range stun, then you constantly want to fight for your mid wave control, which makes it harder for Twisted Fate to get away and make a side lane play um, because you can punish uh, off of mid lane. So the Trindomir will round it out for them for a fly quest. Okay, Trindomir top for Kuma. What is the answer for Jenkins and CLG? The Trindomir is kind of bold, and that's saying that I have faith in my Volibear Syndra uh, for fighting for mid wave, uh, because you know Volibear Syndra wins that two v two pretty substantially, unless there's a really good positional advantage for Twisted Fate and Trundle. There's just a lot more options on the side of the Syndra side there for FlyQuest, but the counter here from Jenkins, baby. How do this, you feel about Kled? I, I feel good about it. We've been we've been tr searching and trying to come up with the counters for the Trindomir that has really taken over a lot of the split push priority in a lot of these games with the hole breaker power, with the mobility of the champion, also being able to go Gale Force to uh, collapse four team fights later on. Kled is a champion that plays off of raw power early. And if you have a Twisted Fate, you don't have to back down. So I expect very aggressive play here from Jenkins on the Kled. What's going on? Jake from State Farm, the perp just confessed. I think, I don't know. Uh, what? Oh, can't afford streaming anymore, so here we are. Oh, don't give up what you love. State Farm has options to personalize your policy so you get a rate that fits your budget. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. The subtitles would be nice. For surprisingly great rates to fit any budget, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. This one ought to be a lot of fun, Kobe, because not only do we get to have the Kled counterpick into the Trindomir matchup, but we also get to see Renata Glask. I'm excited <laughs> to see yes. how Afro Moo pilots this, how well it can work, and if we get any of those big team fight moments where he hits a massive ulti onto multiple people to turn things a little chaotic. Welcome one, welcome all. We've got things for you in every lane. If you like top lane, aggressive play here. The counter pick Kled into the Trindomir mid lane. That's gonna be determining where this twist of fate goes, which side lane actually gets the mid lane pressure transfer. And the bottom lane, the new champ, Renata is in. It's been played a whole bunch in LCK uh, already previously, by the way, but I'm excited to see it here in the hands of Aframu especially. Yeah, buddy. Because he so often adopts early champions. He puts in so much time whenever a support champion is released. And in pairing it with Zeri, there's a lot of possibilities here off of the range. And then trying to use that steroid because Zeri has so much mobility that you can effectively use your range and mobility to kite people around until they're very low. And you get to choose your opportunities uh, for actually going for the engagements. And something like that pairs really well with the revived steroid here from Renata. And Aphromoo also taking the exhaust, as we've already seen, very, very powerful into these dive comps uh, that do have Kaisa and the like on their side. Kaisa Kled Twisted Fate. Um, led by a Nautilus ultimate is also very clearly another dive setup. Now, the one thing that I'm also excited to see with this Renata Glass pick is the fact that, remember that the way her, her steroid, that bailout works, is she can cast it on you, and then even if you die within three seconds, you will come back. Now, in the heat of a team fight, yes, you can probably just be re-killed again. You don't respawn with that much health. If you're already losing the fight, it can be bad. But the ability for this to save someone in what would have been an attempted one-for-one, one, like a dive, Crit? never mind, maybe we can't even talk about it. Kubo nearly just got the solo kill, forcing out the flash from Jenkins when he's still level one, got his exhaust too. Oh my God, in a champ where you want to play on the edge as aggressive as possible on the Kled,
Kumo right into his face. Crit there forces out the double summoner spells. Kumo, honestly, that was just... You, I hate to compliment, you know, Trindamir's because they always just all in you and spin on you and try and crit you. But no. when you get that big crit, you're like, oh, man, I played it so well. Bottom side, though, Contracts is on the oh, aggressive. Oh, Johnson has flashed away, but the follow-up is immediately there, and there's no way out. First blood over to Luger. Really good setup from your boy, Poom. Contracts is on the way down, and even though there's a ward, Poom sets it up. Renata is a squishy champion, does not have her own dash, and he nails Aphromu. Aphromu does exhaust, but he doesn't flash, but now river fight maybe? Okay, Poom just comes up to uh, drop the bush. CC onto the crab there <laughs> to get rid of the shield. There we go. All right, now they're not interested in walking towards this river at all. They do not want to deal with Jose Diotto, and that just means that CLG is able to fall back. Nicely done early on to get themselves a lead here. Okay, so Johnson, no flash, no cleanse. Aphromu, no exhaust here. Nothing he could do to uh, to help out and peel, the jo uh, peel for Johnson. So the Zeri's in the dirt already. I kind of like that. Actually, you know, I'm not a huge fan of the champion, so... Uh, good job, CLG. Foul Fox though, going to take a bit of a rest mid here. He's hovering to the correct side of mid lane because his jungler, bottom side for sure. So he knows Jose had free reign to be up on the top side possibilities there. That means he does not blow any summoner spells. And the ramifications for the bottom lane will be tremendous. When the Zeri dies early like that um, and blows both summoners, is going to require a little bit of babysitting here. Yeah. Um, is it even calling over Jose to help them push this wave in? Wow. Poom actually gets the reset off there on Nautilus. Gets the tier one boots. Brown bags have been achieved. Uh, you know, as much as people will make fun of them for being ugly shoes, they work <laughs> fine, okay? And when nobody else has any shoes, the, Your ugly shoes are fine. Exactly. Your shoes are looking pretty damn good because everybody else is getting blisters. Well, Poom's back down in bottom lane now, and I'm excited to see if CLG will be able to continue uh, running the show down here with those summoner spells from Johnson not being active. Like you said, of course, Cleanse having a very low cooldown for summoner spells, so that one's already half recovered. Johnson will have that again here soon. Afro moves exhaust on a very similar timer as Kumo shoves another wave in up here topside, and Jenkins just farms that one up underneath the turret. Kumo doesn't seem to be struggling with his matchup at all no he does not and that really really sucks for jenkins because trindamir scales quite nicely and uh Kled is really a one-way ticket type of champ mm -hmm. trindamir versatile you can spin you can spin out uh flowers but it is a lot more difficult uh for for Kled to provide that ulti goes one way <laughs> well i mean the ulti goes whichever way you, you place it but and so you can and you better it. be placing it forward yes yeah, exactly. your, your team wants to dive with it um, and, and honestly, if you don't have early advantages to play off of, then you investing your mid lane pick in this Twisted Fate that wants to be able to go either top or bottom for aggressive plays right. loses a lot of, of power with the with the team setup. So the top lane, we'll keep track of it. Um, you know, it did get out of hand. It was like, oh, no, the summoner spells were burned. Uh, well, guess what? They're almost back up. So uh, he didn't lose out on CS. You know, we're making a, a you know big deal of a possible scenario that isn't really being punished. Mm -hmm. So um, it's it's actually just fine. And uh, unless, you know, there's some really early play that uh, goes on up there while he still doesn't have flash, he'll just forget about it, you know? Yep. Uh, sometimes you get crit, okay? Yep. <laughs> sometimes Trendemir is blessed by the RNG of the crits, yeah. and he's able to have those sorts of trades. Anyway, FlyQuest are going to grab the top side Scuttle Crab here. Teleport used to get back into lane from Palafox there, switching over to a heal now with a summoner spell book. He is looking. You can see how he's playing to the bottom side of his lane here, like near bottom lane to be able to try to gate in there if there's an opportunity. Ooh. Contracts also hanging out down here. Johnson and Aphromu have to be aware that something smells fishy. Yeah, and they know Johnson's like, all right, when I die that early in lane here as Zeri, like I've got a big target on my back, okay? Mm -hmm. So... They, their, their eyes are on that flash cooldown just as much as CLGs are. Oh, Contract yep. gets his butt spotted, spotted here. And they were getting a little antsy. They were being so patient. But that's a good thing about the double range that we are highlighting here for this lane. They don't have to move up at all. You know, Zeri, very long range. Here's the Kled ultimate, and that one is going in. All right. They want to dive to Koi. 
He'll do all right at the start, but honestly, that he's was able not to get a, himself I'm gonna give away. That a thumb down, that. Yeah, that oh. was. I mean, they made it on top of him, and that is about <laughs> it. He survived. He's just fine. Uh -oh. Now here in the bottom lane, FlyQuest. They got to be prepared because this fight is about to go the wrong way. CLG just brought more dudes to the fight, and they get themselves a free kill. Yeah, and you are not going to reset out of that. There's no way you're getting the takedown to get uh, to revive here. Nope. Twisted Fate Flowers. This is the prior. This is how you use it early for CLG. Bottom lane. Really, really timely Twisted Fate counter right there. Even with contracts being uh, level 6 disadvantage, which can be so scary, especially Volley Bear Trundle. The Volley Bear uh, has a huge advantage there. But uh, if you've got a Twisted Fate in your pocket, very, very necessary move there from Palafox to keep this CLG win condition going. This is yeah. a kill and an assist now here for Luger. So even though Powell Fox got that one, and he's he's definitely down on CS, trying to catch up now to, to catch some of the wave that was pushed in on him, uh, it was definitely worth it here to keep this Kai'Sa pumping away because, again, you get your early tier to start it ticking for your Muramana transformation um, and get your early swords here to try and get your attack damage evolved. FlyQuest, though, up onto that Rift Herald. That will be their payment since Zeri has come out of base. You see this movement. Uh, has come through lane and can easily go this way over to Rift Road, or after it's done, head back down to bottom side of the map. So Kaisa maybe gets to push one wave in and Poom sets up. Okay, Poom will look for Johnson here. He finds him, Contracts immediately with the follow, but Johnson's able to use Cleanse to keep himself safe. Now Contracts and Poom try to get out. Really in. They're heading back towards friendly territory, but can they get there? Johnson says no and just guns Contracts down. Yeah, the extra move here from Takoy and Jose through the river too means there's no way out. So they set up the trap, but at a numbers disadvantage for themselves. Power deficit, CLG losing out, and FlyQuest, they already got the top neutral objective. Oh boy. Kumo wants another one. Jenkins about to remount, he gets it, and now Kumo's gotta get away. The undying rage doesn't work well enough. He'll stay alive, but he won't get the kill. Actually, Contracts is alive again, so FlyQuest don't capitalize on that kill that they got on jungle with a neutral objective or even the blue steel here as they're able to collapse and defend it. So not too bad for CLG, not too great for FlyQuest. Weren't able to get as much as they wanted out of that transition. Top side is definitely remaining spicy and that was a one for two summoner spell trade by Kumo forcing on Jenkins. So definitely another advantage here to Kumo. He's pushing this one to the edge. Now FlyQuest, after pushing in on the bottom lane first, they bring over jungle and they will get both early game neutral objectives flowers and oh. importantly that is a cloud drake first one so no cloud soul this time around with mountain showing up on the wall as drake number two it means we're going to get ocean infernal or hex tech soul really high value stuff there if FlyQuest is able to continue stacking those of course this first drake did not fall exceptionally early ten and a half minutes into the game is not exactly a super heavy focus on that early objective, but it still feels nice to get. You mentioned both early objectives, so I do want to comment that Eye of the Herald is still in Jose's inventory, still has about two minutes left to drop that one. And that one will go a long ways towards evening up this gold. So like this, the gold is very, very close right now, assuming the Rift Trail gets off and they've got the dragon advantage plus top lane pressure has generally been in kumo's favor he's even working off turret plates by hand during these recalls from jenkins you know with the with the double summoner spell up here constantly being blown by jenkins pretty much all the twisted fate uh, options have been targeted towards the bottom side of the map that's where clg have their advantage uh, good little toggle there by the observers because luger who is the player that people usually look at for CLG for really carrying uh, their their successful games here is doing quite well on this Kai'Sa. Yes, your inventory looks very spread out on Kai'Sa because you're trying to get all these pieces for the build, but um, has he upgraded Berserkers as well for the attack speed and movement speed? And the next five minutes are very critical uh, for this champ. So Kai'Sa definitely looking for possible killer instinct plays, and this is where CLG want to try and use their, their map play available to these champions. All of them have very long range abilities to try and join uh, with skirmishes that somebody else starts out. And Power Fox does have Twisted Fate Ultimate ready, along with the roam here from Pooming Contracts. Yep, they are potentially could set something up here. 
Palafox juggling those cards back and forth. Jose was running out of time on the Eye of the Herald. Just going to summon that one up here, grab a couple of plates. With a little bit of extra damage, they could get a third. The Herald is going to take that one very close Ooh. to down. Poom misses the dredge line. Decoy will get thrown up into the air there by the ulti. Jenkins arrives, but since dredge line didn't hit, FlyQuest can disengage in time. Yep, FlyQuest very happy with that one. Another swing from G uh, CLG towards mid. Another evasion here from Takoy without having to blow much. So both of the attempts of this Kled, where we've seen try and push in on top side and then make your roam mid, both been misses. So, so far, the Kled looks very underwhelming, Flowers. Yeah. Losing the 1v1 and not successful at all roams towards mid. They don't even get, you know, summoner spells blown uh, when, when he goes for it. So... Uh, FlyQuest pretty happy with dealing with the sort of surprise counterpick that was pulled out against them. Yeah, props to Decoy for playing it well and making sure that he doesn't get caught out by this stuff too. Recognizing, hey, this is the Kled game plan. This is what he'll try to do. Mm. Meanwhile, back up in topside, Kumo still has that goldie. Both of them already on tier two boots, as is so important when you're up against Trindamir because, hey, he runs at you. And <laughs> you need to be able to run away from him whenever he's deciding it's time to run at you. Got he's a late call. Yeah, got a late call, 80 stacks still left on that one, so he'll be able to farm that up as he goes. And to me, that just shows that he is not worried about this 1v1 matchup at all. He's saying, all right, don't got to rush towards any items. Kled doesn't matter. I am A-OK -okay in this 1v1, which feels pretty bad from the CLG perspective when you pick this lane as your counter matchup. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, yeah. They also haven't got anything out of the room towards mid, so definitely not the intended outcome here from CLG with that matchup. But again, they still have the Kai'Sa on bottom side in a very good spot for Luger. So the dive potential is there. And that's what a lot of this team is built around. Twisted Fate, teleport side lanes. Uh, thing here for CLG is they're gonna have to start opening up some some tower pushing for those side lane plays to, to really be more threatening against FlyQuest because Kumo uh, is, is looking like he's going to scale into a very strong split push scenario here. And you're going to have to bring multiple people to to try and deal with them. Now, mm -hmm. if they can successfully do that and actually pick him off, you know, and punish him uh, in some of his attempts to split push with Twisted Fade and Kaisa and stuff like that, being able to join in and kill the split pusher without giving anything up to FlyQuest, and that would be great for CLG. But if not, then um, then it starts to get a little risky here with all the neutral objectives going FlyQuest way. Here's bottom play number two. Okay, Palafox ready to make those moves. Goes in after the enemy support, but Aphromoo is able to get over the wall in time. Fires off that hostile takeover, <laughs> makes Poom root his own mid laner, but nothing more. So FlyQuest survives, but they do need to use summoner spells to do it. However, they'll respond by taking the turret here in mid lane, and that first turret of the game means FlyQuest now has the gold lead. Yeah, big punish from FlyQuest. Every time you go for this Twisted Fate play, last time it was an extra wave of minions that was given up, the CS. Kind of a lasting effect. This time they finish off that tower. That's where they use the Rift Herald. So it was very low to begin with. And now River Roam from Takoy and Jose. Well, Jose is going to get caught as soon as he face checks the brush here. Now Takoy's ready to try to follow it up and help him out a little bit. But Jose Diodo with a defensive ulti on the run. Target switching over now to Takoy. Nice pick up there from CLG. Picking off the enemy mid, forcing the enemy jungler out. They will earn themselves this drink. Yeah, you can see the reasoning here from FlyQuest was, oh, they just used Twisted Fate. Ultimate, it's our turn to make a power play towards bottom side. Remember last time when we caught out uh, Contracts and Poom in a brush, setting up that gank play? Yeah, let's do that again. With CLG this time around, Power Fox says, no problem, I've got my unleashed teleport, boys. It's fine, we've got another card in the back pocket. I hope Jenkins does, because uh, Kumo's uh, really been pressuring him. But oh no, he lost his lizard. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Scarl, this, this, this scared lizard, always <laughs> running away. What a coward. Um, but uh, this time around, it's the same, very similar play where it is Contracts and Poom setting up this play because they're like, all right, we have vision on you. We know you're walking into it. Uh, but this time around, they had Twisted Fate teleport to do it. Jenkins, can he get one back? He's found his lizard. He's fighting back, and he will use the ultimate Darn! defensively to get away there. <laughs> so it's ulti for ulti, ghost for exhaust there in top lane. All right. Well, that's better than the other summoner spell trades we've seen on top side, where Kumo is getting two for ones. Mm -hmm. The one for one there, uh, pretty decent, as well as the ults being traded. So we'll see if anything happens in the split push war due to that. But currently, again, back on track for CLG. They need to get these towers down so they can use more space with their Twisted Fate Kaisa. 
to try and get some of these these players picked off in, in transition. Basically, you want to open up more space, so it's it's more dangerous when FlyQuest are rotating between objectives here and, and through here through lanes. So you can actually use some of these uh, some of these long range plays. And right now they're looking bottom. They still show with the Syndra mid, so CLG know they've got a power play, and they're going to use that power play just to get the objective and force FlyQuest back. Nicely done. Tying up that turret count at one to one means about a 1,000 gold lead for the side of Counter Logic Gaming. As Decoy flashes away to avoid the collapse from the ultimate of Palafox, who's been getting good pressure with these TF ults this game. Yeah, I mean, good uh, trade flash for flash there. Necessary flash from Decoy. If that gold card hits, then you get stunned and you have plasma applied to you. So yeah. Luger ults and you die in transition. Again, that play would have worked if the mid tower was down. That's the importance of getting these out outer towers down. Uh, so there's no safety for the FlyQuest members to run back to. FlyQuest, meanwhile, they're still feeling pretty good about this game. Two and a half minutes until that next dragon. And their setup for dragons is very good with the Syndra. Then you get to see the strength of this champion, the long range of those stuns. You can fish around for some of the picks. You do have to be worried, of course, about your positioning on this champion because Takoi now will not have flash for the dragon fight. And Syndra has zero outs. Yep. So if you get hit by anything, the Kled, or even uh, the uh, Trundle coming through and getting a pillar onto you could mean your death. Uh, because you don't have phase rush. He went airy for more lane power, so you have no phase rush to get away once a pillar slow is applied to you and the, and the knockback CLG will jump on you. So Takoi's positioning will be very, very important for this dragon fight. And CLG going to try and flex their muscles on these dive champs. And as we're talking about the dragon fight, with that being under two minutes from now, I do want to go ahead and remind everybody that there is no teleport on either top laner this game. It's Ghost versus Exhaust, so that means for these to be full-on 5v5s or 5v4s even from either side, the top laners have to make the trek down. They have to be setting up in time. They have to recognize how early they need to regroup for that if they choose to, or we might just continue to see them play the split push game while everybody else just does 4v4s around the dragon. Yeah, and that's why, you you know, they're pretty early, but they've already roll swapped here or lane swapped down to the bottom side of the map. Meanwhile, the, the teleport mid laners swapped up to the top side to push there. Palfox has his already and his ultimate already. Takoy kind of waiting on his, and you see how cautiously Takoy is playing now. He knows he's got no flash. He's still even waiting on his teleport. So Takoy is kind of hoping that he could squeeze out some experience here, but CLG, four members loaded onto this top side of the map to try and punish. Here come the reinforcements from FlyQuest in their rotation. Okay, Contracts is going to see that there's a control ward right there. Close the Yodo charging Arr! in, but a nice pillar over the wall means there will be no way for them to try to attack Palafox or anybody else from CLG. And with that plan foiled, CLG now marches across the map. They're heading towards the bottom side river to set up for this Drake in 25 seconds. And if you have your isolated split pushers and CLG get first roam from a play like that, um, they can set up their picks on onto Kumo. Kumo's been doing very well this whole game, but if he gets picked off by, you know, Twisted Fate Ultimate or somebody roaming down from CLG without FlyQuest being able to punish, then you lose control of the map very quickly, and that's what CLG need. They need to make a pick and then turn that pick into an objective. So mid lane turret finally getting pushed down here. This opens up more territory to try and make your picks with, all in time for this dragon and flowers. Your Unleashed Teleport is ready on Takoi, so he split pushed topside. He got the top tower in trade and yep. payment for this CLG mid one. And with that Rift Herald, he's, he's even threatening on uh, number two here. Forces a teleport out of the side of CLG that's got to be Palafox, uh, since he's the only one with one. Still has his Twisted Fate ultimate, though, so he could use it that way. And since everybody was invested over there, looks like Contract should be able to smite Whoa. this. Oh, <laughs> that was close for a second. I didn't know if that was going to miss it by just a sliver. Mm. But no, it does not happen. Kumo uses the Ghost running in there, trying to grab some damage onto Contracts. But of course, a good flash out will keep him safe. And Kumo goes right back to side lane. I like how they're treating Kumo, too. Everybody is like, just stay away from me, man, all right? Leave me alone. We get it, all right? You are strong. You're critting people. You're angry. You're raging. He's yelling at people. And Contracts immediately flashes away. He's like, don't even yep, nope. don't even auto attack me. Not once. even trying this. Kumo still, you know, Jenkins is kind of trailing along behind him like, hey, watch out. The angry guy with the big sword is coming. Uh, and then Kumo's like, ah, oh, uh, you even going for these minions? And Jenkins kind of sneaks in, sneaks out. Uh, they've, they've been able to avoid the all-in nicely mm -hmm. and, and keep the barbarian at arm's length. 
Okay, so let me ask you this, Kobe, because CLG has a very modest lead of only about 500 gold right now. Mm. What do They're you? Modest team. Yeah, hang on. <laughs> so what do you what do you want to see them them do right now? Here in the next five minutes, we're 22 minutes into the game. What is the call for CLG? Yeah, at the risk of uh, sounding very repetitive. Pick. They need to get one of these okay. big side lanes. Play these side lanes as, as powerful as possible. You've got a Kled and a Twisted Fate as your solo laners. Both those ultimates. You can find picks with these. So that's why number one goal is uh, you know, this last outer tower here on the top side. After that's taken, you've got a lot of space to work with. So if you're able to push out your minion waves, uh, look for those collapses, then you will be able to join. Luger, though, gets all in by Ooh. Johnson, and he tells him to sit down. Oh, and he goes right sit back down. in to hand him the seat. Luger with the solo kill on the enemy AD carry, and Afro moves about to join him. Nicely done. There's your pick, CLG. <laughs> There's okay. your kill. Well, I did not expect the pick to come from Johnson trying to 1v2 Luger and just getting his ass hand right there. <laughs> Sometimes that's League of Legends, baby. <laughs> yeah, John, uh, Luger goes back and you forgot something. Sends him back to the fountain. That's going to be Baron Flowers. What does your pick comp need more than an AD carrier right into the face? Luger, my man. What a play. And the game is now feeling really good for CLG. They'll get the Baron. All they lose is the bottom lane tier one turret. Who cares about that thing? You don't need it anyway. Everybody's wearing purple. This is huge for this squad. Trust in the bottom lane. This is the CLG way. This is 1v2. You know, Johnson goes for that because he's got Afro right next to him, but he lost the trade and he still has Plasma on him. Plus, the Q is already in the air, so the missiles will still hit you. Yep. And Johnson flashes as well, dying. Then they go for the next pick, and it's easy here. Powell Fox right in on top of him. Twisted Fate, the best at punishing there for that. Gold card into the face allows easy fallout from Poom. CLG really right back on. This is actually so good for this team. Flowers, they are at the bottom of the standings. Only above TSM down there, trying to climb their way up. They're not out of arm's length, Woo! and they get another one. Luger finishes that one, too! Luger is getting it done with the Kaisa here in game number two today. Muramana Nashor's Tooth still has the Dirk, has the Lost Chapter, the Blasting Wand. Looks oh, like he... we're going to get to see that Ludens yep. type of build here, spamming out those high-power Void Seekers. Palafox has that gold card locked in, too. He's ready to pose a lockdown threat to anybody that walks in range. CLG with the Baron on top of the pick they got on Jose Diodo. They will use that momentum to push down mid. Jenkins has set up here in the bottom lane. He's confident enough to not just get ran down by Kumo. CLG's push continues. It certainly does. And you see those Ws. They are hitting already, even before. Oh, Takoi gets stunned. Follow up from the wild cards, but not enough. Hostile takeover goes out. Only one <laughs> auto attack traded back and forth between Jenkins and Contract. Just smack each other upside the head. Palafox has to back away now. Only loses oh my the gosh. shield. That reminds me of the horny jail uh, meme. <laughs> Dude, what? Because he has the club and he just bonks him on the head one time. It was one <laughs> auto attack. What? <laughs> Go to jail, Bob. Go to jail, Bob. Send Go to back. jail. Koo, <laughs> Jenkins, I, I've seen what's been going on up there in that top lane. One bonk. One bonk. There you go, sir. <laughs> a singular this is your bonk. daily reminder. Bonk. A singular bonk. That's what we're not as good for. Really funny. Uh, honestly, whenever we get new champs in the game that have some sort of uh, interaction like that where you actually can affect teammates, you know, it, it was an epidemic when Bard first came out, too. People trying to troll each other with the Bard ultimate stage yeah. and stuff. This one goes another level when it's the opponent team trying to set you up to be able to You can make it. them troll each other. Nicely done from Jose Diota. They're using the ulti, watching and waiting to immune some of the CC from Twisted Fate so that he can get on top of the target. Palafox wants to get away, and Palafox will get away! Despite Jose Diota's ability buffering, the enemy mid laner stays alive. Kumo's trying to do the same thing now. Trindamir falls! And CLG continues pushing bottom. Johnson oh, tries to oh. kite it out, but he barely misses the kill on contracts. And King's Tribute heals him back up. Poom can't find the dredge line on Afromu, but the base is being demolished. CLG are absolutely brutalizing FlyQuest. Where were you when CLG stomped the, thir the third place team in the LCS, Flowers? You I was were, here. You were here next to me. All right, just checking. Okay. <laughs> I'm Where were you? I am not a figment of your imagination. I am real. I think. Uh, Wait, if, what I, I if I had a, an imaginary friend, it would be a lot like you. 
Honestly. Hell yeah, I take that as the most <laughs> sincere and wholesome compliment. <laughs> Luckily, I've got the real thing. Oh yeah, baby, and we got ourselves what looks like a really, really good game state for CLG Contracts. He's gonna grab this third Drake for his team. He's gonna put him on Soul Point, moving towards an Ocean Soul as well <laughs> with three tanky guys on the squad. You know, I had to hesitate there too. I was, I was like, FlyQuest is third place though, right? Yeah, they're yeah. still third place in, in, in the standings, but they really have been dropping since uh, since the early stages. Here's another look though, um, at your Magician Escape from Palafox, and both stuns are used early on in the attempt at the pick, so he's thinking, okay, literally every CC was already used, they don't have the damage to burst me, I'm going for it, and he gets it out. And then bottom side, they, it was, this was FlyQuest's choice to go in for this fight, yeah, but the exhaust, the exhaust from Jenkins nullifying the damage of Kumo. They can turn it right back around. And then look how close this gets. Contracts has no fear. <laughs> look <laughs> how close. He's running into those bullets face first, looking for the bite, and he barely squeezes it out, gets the Q off, gets the kills here. Both kills. Only flash from uh, Contracts was blown there uh, and worked out by FlyQuest too. So CLG, they, they make him look easy on both sides of the map. They're, they're actually just winning the entire map. This time around, though, Palafox in trouble. Palafox getting caught here, buying a little bit of time with the stasis, but is it enough time? He flashes, but it won't matter. Palafox is down, and FlyQuest is trying to fight back. Kumo's here on the front line, not having to use the ulti just yet. Jenkins can uh -oh. die next. CLG, what are you doing? They've lost two for free here. FlyQuest still in the chase, looking to go after Poom. Poom wants to get away to the blast cone. Nice, they pop it in time and don't give him the angle. Poom is now stuck. Poom is not gonna go home any sort of comfortable way. Kumo, Kumo continues it. the chase. That was a bit of an int, but he doesn't actually die. Kumo's gonna walk away. Oh. Okay, blocked. Good. Nice job there from Jose and the burn. Barely not enough to take down Kumo. FlyQuest though, they're right back into it, Flowers. CLG gave them too much money here. Couple of shutdowns. And this is at a time when CLG have inhibitor advantage. So more money flows into FlyQuest. Two inhibitors worth of super minions and lines of extra minions will be going into them while the CLG members wait out their deaths. Palafox this time around, He's probably filled with a bit of overconfidence after the last escape, but into four members, FlyQuest definitely make him pay. And then Jenkins comes through thinking, oh, maybe we can salvage it. They use a lot to pick you off, but they cannot because the ultimate from Takoi is still there. So Syndra lays down all these orbs, uh, stunning everybody up. Nobody else can actually follow up on the engage there from Jenkins. And then nice blast cone pop there from Kumo. Good heads up play. He sees Poom trying to anchor over to the wall to get the blast cone out. And CLG back on the Baron though, forcing FlyQuest to them, trying to make use of the down inhibitors. Okay, Jose Diotto forced to ult away defensively. CLG with control over the river, control over the crab. Boink. Jenkins goes in for the flank, but the rest of the team is not near him. Palafox throws out a gold <laughs> card, but no lethal threat from CLG here. FlyQuest losing half HP on Kumo, so he'll back away. And Baron control over to CLG. Those are always the funniest ones to me of uh, the the ultimates when Jenkins ults in, and then you see Kled just like bounce off. <laughs> he just nopes right out like, of it. All right, just see kidding, I was, I was just joking. Uh, it's just a little Yoke Just a prank, here. bro. <laughs> just a prank. The Baron, no, that is not a prank. No. CLG get it, and that's why he bounced off. So like, it's funny looking, but it is correct call here, uh, and CLG, very, very well done from them. They, they, they acquire the Baron, two lines of super minions still will be useful to them. So even though FlyQuest are setting up all these bush ganks on that side of the map, there's no reason for CLG to go to that side of the map. Right. There's only one inhibitor and that sucker is topside. So they're going straight for it. Well, the inhibitors are about to respawn here. You've got about 30 seconds until mid lane and bottom lane inhibitors are back on the side of FlyQuest. CLG also- they leave the ward with one auto? CLG has the opportunity to go for the Ocean Soul as well if they don't find a way to end the game right here. CLG piling into top lane. They will not quite secure that inhib. FlyQuest are able to chase them away in time. All right, so I guess they wanted to leave the ward to try and rush the inhibitor, but then they don't get the inhibitor because good defense there from FlyQuest. So um, they, they defend it. They keep their inhibitor on top side alive. The mid and bottom ones have both respawned, so they're feeling a bit better about the setup here. Yes, they're facing a giant, overwhelming gold disadvantage. CLG are looking like they are going to finish this one, but 
FlyQuest have some hope of trying to set up a sneaky play first. If they can get a face check or something on a squishier member, maybe a surprise play is in the works here. Through the brush though, CLG, you can tell they are very suspicious and they're not going towards Dragon. They're going straight towards Inhibitor. And CLG have a good way to check these brushes for enemy players really with smart. this build from Kai'Sa. The Void Seekers are so strong with how they refresh the cooldown when they proc. Whenever that damage hits, it's so good. Really smart from CLG. Power down and they get two inhibitors before the reset from FlyQuest. The timing difference on the spawn of that Dragon means with Baron buff, they go straight through mid. And now Jose Yodo taking a lot of damage again, a defensive ult but the hostile takeover comes out. CLG now disengaging, having to fall back a little bit. Johnson trying to chase this one. Jose Diodo again at about one third HP. Kumo leading the charge, seeing if they can find any of these guys. Flash away from Poom so he doesn't get locked down. CLG continue their retreat as a five-man unit. They move over towards the Drake. Remember, this is Ocean Soul if CLG can secure it. And it's very, very little oh. if FlyQuest secure it. So it's all about the denial here. Half from of that oh, was HP on one, the other half from the other. This is why I mentioned the Kaisa build, the itemization here, making those Ws so threatening and giving CLG such a good angle. But it's still going to be FlyQuest that end up taking the Drake and denying the soul. Stop now, Palafox getting caught in a bad spot. Jenkins coming around from behind. Poom looking to lock down to Koi, and Palafox here for the follow. Has the gold card, but no flash for the distance. Meanwhile, back in the base, it's just going to be the end of the game, my friends. Kumo tries to fight against Luger in contracts. Luger wants to get away with a killer instinct, but he can't quite do it. Kumo stays alive with 300 HP. CLG, they're going to lose Poom. They might lose contracts. Jenkins continuing the chase after Johnson who's going to flash over the wall to stay alive. FlyQuest will keep their Nexus standing, but that's about it. That's a lot of money into the hands of Kumo, though. I believe that was a full bounty. Yep, 1,000 gold. 1,000 gold shutdown for the Trindamir. So at least they've got some money back their way. The gold back down to 4.4k advantage in the favor of CLG. Uh, it's going to be about can they utilize it here for the comeback for FlyQuest. It's going to be very difficult, but that is something along the lines to give them hope. Oof, CLG, though, just reset here. You have plenty, plenty of time here. You can yeah. set up for the next Baron. I would say don't risk an overreach. Yes, there's only one inhibitor left. There's an exposed Nexus, but uh, FlyQuest definitely have the capabilities of punishing you getting those kills inside base if you try and uh, force it through here. And since there's only a minute now and 55 seconds left on this Baron, you can have a way easier time of setting up for that and looking for the dive. Since if they come out and they extend themselves in uh, on the map, you know, looking for Baron through here or through here, yep. then you get to dive on the back line and you get to make use of your Twisted Fate, your Kai'Sa advantages. But if you attack them inside this small area of the base, then you're not, you're not going to get effectiveness out of out of your team comp out of, out of your champion so it's more it's more risk averse but it's also i think more intelligent to just set up for for this, uh, the next baron baron alive in one minute and 20. the inhibitors respawning in about two minutes remember that bottom lane inhibitor is still up so clg could try to make a move towards that if they like they are putting down plenty of vision here in this bottom side jungle of FlyQuest, moving down this lane now with that minion wave and it looks like the inhibitor might be the goal here. CLG still with a 4,000 gold lead, marching in as five yet again. Poom on the front line, Contracts doing the same. Void Seekers flying out, trying to find any sort of poke that Luger may be able to land. Remember, every one of those that hits means the next one comes out much more rapidly. That's what's so dangerous about this Aram Kaisa build. It's very, very good when he's able to dial those in. Yes, sir, and he's been accurate with them. Two onto Afro Moon means two. He's dead yep. in the dirt already. Might be getting to the point where one will be able to one-shot him. Kumo takes half his HP. You have to dodge every single Void Seeker or it just gets worse. The bullet hell is multiplicative. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he lands one, you get another one. Well, here we go. CLG still fishing. Okay, so Jose Diodo doesn't take a ton of damage from him. He has a Spirit Visage and a Force of Nature along yeah. with the Kim Tank He's and the, the only, Mercury Track. He is the only one. Yep, there's Takoi, one-third of his health bar from a single missile. Luger doing a good job zoning these guys back, keeping control over the situation for CLG. 
40 seconds until the other inhibitors respawn with the bottom lane inhibitor destroyed. CLG feels confident to back away and head towards the Baron pit. It's been a theme of this season, Flowers. The uh, the AP poke champions with Muramana. Corky first was the biggest offender with all the rockets coming through. Yep. Um, Kai'Sa merging in LCK and uh, being quite popular mid lane or bottom lane. Either way, you get fed, you get the items, the poke comes through, and here's what I was talking about. The Baron is so difficult for FlyQuest to check because these avenues are right where Luger can shoot these projectiles down, so it's way smarter, way safer for ZLG. Just wait for the Baron. They have three inhibitors down with Baron. That's got to be the best recipe in the book for a win, Flowers. There's no better recipe than a Baron buff well, maybe if you added on an Elder Dragon, you know, and a soul, you keep adding on things, but the base is still the same. The base of the dub soup. <laughs> Place five champions in a bowl. Add purple sauce to the bowl. <laughs> Add three Elder three Sprinkles to the bowl. <laughs> Cook for five minutes. Win. That's what CLG is trying to do. 30 seconds until uh, that Drake spawns. It's not Elder quite yet. I said yeah. the wrong sprinkles. This is why I'm not a chef. I can't even read the damn cookbook. Yes, whatever, but man. We got the Ocean Soul <laughs> on the menu. That's a nice spice. And CLG has total control over the area. All right. <clears throat> Let's play a game then. Okay, what the game most, are we playing? Most difficult of games. Okay. Uh, and it's always from the perspective of FlyQuest because they're the ones in the hole now. Uh, and the game is dodgeball. Guess what? Oh, no. Your reward is only not dying. Your reward is you get to live. <laughs> you get to live for a little while. That's You're making this sound worse with every detail that you give me about it. It's like, first we're going to play a game, uh -huh, uh -huh. and then we're going to be the kids that get bullied in dodgeball. Well, you see, it's a horror story. So oh, it's like, no. it's not we're going to play a game. It's we're going to play a game. Oh, no. You're that spooky guy with the the, the, the guy from Saw. The the the. The puppet. So I have no idea because I don't watch scary movies. You don't watch scary movies, man. Scary movies are no, half have, the time they're they're comedy. I have a very good Most reason. Most of them are really bad. A very good reason, but I don't know if I can even say it on broadcast. But you I have get, a good reason. Did okay? you get scared from a scary movie when you're like five? Um, no, it's it's a better story than that. It's got some uh, some unexpected twists at the end. Okay, well, I want to hear the story now, even off the air, if you don't get to tell it on the air. But Kumo is having to run away as CLG is the villain in this horror movie for FlyQuest. Nautilus Ulti chases down Johnson. Luger jumps in. Ooh. Yes, he's going to have the bailout, but he ain't getting bailed out from nothing. Two already dead on the side of FlyQuest. Jenkins and Contracts going in looking for more as Kumo tries to buy a little bit of time. But time costs too much. CLG find their win. CLG take down third place Fly Quest, dragging them up the standings here. CLG pick themselves up by their bootstraps. That is your ninth place team getting another dub on the board. They're now tied in wins with Immortals, who have yet to play today, but Slow and steady wins the race. CLG begin their climb now. They're trying to fight up there, man. There's still some time. Yeah, a lot of things got to go right, but you got to win the games. CLG just showed that they can do that. And then what the desk was talking about at the, like before this game, talking about how CLG is making some mistakes where they're not having a coherent plan, where they're not moving as a team. That game, they seemed to be really fixing some of those issues. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the coordination was on display in a lot of these bottom lane plays where they're picking champions that you have to be coordinated on. Twisted Fate does nothing if you're a solo player. And they make yeah. multiple plays towards the bottom side, getting Luger fed on this Kai'Sa, using the new AP Kai'Sa poke build from the LCK effectively. And Luger also... Cherry on top with that 1v1 as John one Johnson slick. stepped up to him in mid lane and he clapped him. It was slick, man. We're heading over to the stage now, though, to join Latigris and Luger himself for our Verizon post game interview. You're yeah. trapped into doing when a team is five and one. What a game from CLG and what a performance from Luger. In fact, you were a player of the game for this one. So tell me a bit about your Kaisa play during that match. Yeah, I mean, Kaisa kind of like good against Zeri, and like we just pick it into uh, Zeri. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I get some lead from early game, and like, yeah, I end of the, end of the game is good. And like, yeah, it was kind of scary to one, one position, and like, yeah, <laughs> game was fine. Yeah, very go in tech yeah. champ. You mentioned laning against Zeri, but you also had Renata Glask on the other side. What was that like facing those two champs? I mean, I think Kaisa, AP Kaisa is good against Zeri. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, not like uh, Renata. It's mm -hmm. good against Renata. And like, yeah, Kaisa AP is kind of OP, I think, uh, the mid, mid game. It's just too much pressure, I think, to double. And like, enemy team is just scary to like dodge double or something like that. So if I hit, it's just, yeah, too much damage. And like, yeah. 
It was scary, like you said, though, which means CLG has to play together to win. How do you feel about your synergy as a squad here in week five? Uh, yeah, I think our synergy going really well, and like I'm happy about that. I mean, yeah, if uh, we just make some good draft and like we, we play around like draft, and I think we play really good, and like, yeah, I believe my team, and like, yeah. Yeah, you believe, the fans believe in CLG. Yeah. Luger, congrats on the W, and thank you for the interview. Yeah, thank you. Another time for us to yeah. go to a break right now, everyone. But on the other side, the State Farm Analyst Desk will break this game down. See you there. Yeah, see you. A lot of fun, Kobe, because not only do we get to have the Kled counter pick into the Trindamir matchup, but we also get to see Renata Glass. They got to be prepared because this fight is about to go the wrong way. CLG just brought more dudes to the fight. Luger, though, gets all in by Ooh. Dawson and he tells him to sit down. Oh, and he goes right sit back down. in to hand him the seat. Luger with the solo kill on the enemy AD carry, and Afro moves about to join him. Nicely done. There's your pick, CLG. <laughs>